Well, here we are, Berrimah Diesel Service. And we've just got this uh, lovely 75 series Land Cruiser Ute. Pretty much uh, immaculate, really, actually. He's got the body on the back. Lovely guy touring around the country. Baden's just done timing belt, water pump, belts and other things on the front there for servicing. And, of course, as you can see sitting here, all the guys will be, and girls will be drooling about this. A nice turbo system going on. So I've cleaned up all the studs and the surfaces and faces, getting gaskets ready. Turbo here is ready to uh, slip on, which is pretty much as easy as it'll be. And then, of course, all the piping and everything to... Uh, connect everything up and get air flowing to the engine so it's something we've been doing a really long time here and people might wonder you know why do people turbocharge diesels well as we say a diesel's got no problems getting fuel if we take a look over here and those injectors were done yesterday you can see that the injectors there's six of them and of course you've got an injector pump down here and that still needs a bit of tuning which we'll do later but there's plenty of fuel all these great big plunger pumps and big high flow nozzles and all this sort of stuff as far as we're concerned are BS. Maybe if you're talking four times the output of the motor on some weird custom rig, maybe. Other than that, a complete waste of money and it's more like having a chrome dipstick on your car. Your fuel system could blow this engine up already standard many times over. So no need to mod anything, just rebuild things properly and use the genuine new parts like we do the Denso nozzles. Now, of course, the problem is getting air. You can see you've got a couple of ports over there and a real square-looking manifold. Probably not really accustomed to getting lots of airflow in there. You might even say it's a little bit leaner in the middle ports and then a bit richer up these end ports. So we put on a turbocharger, and the turbocharger, of course, supplies air to the engine. So it does the work. The engine no longer has to suck for the air. Now, just to think of it akin to going for a jog with a... Um, maybe one of those slushy uh, drink straws, you know, the big ones, and breathe through that. Yeah, you can do it. You can walk along and you can get on with the job. But, of course, once you start walking faster and faster and start running, you'll soon find that you just don't have enough get up and go to, um, you know, an air getting into you to keep you moving. And, of course, you start starving of air. Take that straw away and all of a sudden you can run when you open your mouth up and get lots of air in. So with the diesel, it's exactly the same. Loads of fuel getting in there, not much air. So when you put a turbocharger on and set it up properly, you fix that problem. You get lots of air to a diesel, run it lean and clean and cool. You'll increase your power and torque about 40%. That's more than sufficient for a non-turbo engine that wasn't designed for turboing, and it'll last forever if you do that. But go 60, 80, 100, 150% like we see these massive kilowatt gains. Remember these things are only putting out 55, 60 kilowatts at the wheel. We get them in regularly with diagnostics with problems for 130 kilowatts. Well, no wonder. It's 100% and more power gain. You just want to go up about 40% in power and torque. So when we're done with the job on here, that's what we'll be looking at. This guy will drive off into the distance, smiling and, of course, being able to tow and, of course, have that loaded back on his ute without a problem. You can see more of these videos here on our Facebook Look us up at YouTube, some technical information at berrimadiesel.com where you can find out about how to look after your diesel engine.